So I make a small incision with a 15 blade, and then I grab the, the sub-Q fat with some brown adsense. I only, and then kind of just cut it off. That gives me direct access to the body wall. I only do this with cat space and dog space. Otherwise, I, I actually divide the tissue properly. Um, tent the tissue, or tent the body wall, make a stab incision, use my Metsies to open that incision to pierce through the peritoneum if I hadn't gone through that already. Uh, and then I'm just kind of mess around with the spay hook. Um, I'm sure you guys are, are pretty good at doing that. It takes me a couple of tries on this one. There's always those magic ones where I get it right away, which is not here. And there it is. Um, and then basically this part, I think if you've seen that, that shelter med video, oh, the lighting's less kind of shit, but we, we fix it in a little bit. But basically if you've seen that video, it's the same thing. I've got traction on the, the suspensory and the push down on the body wall. I cut the suspensory and then do my pedicle tie uh, right here. And then quickly cut and push the knot off. At the same time, putting the actual horn between my fingers to stop blood flow, then I clamp pull uh, caudally to then get to the next horn and bring it up. And now you can see everything a lot better. Obviously, this is a pediatric spay. These vessels are tiny. I could rip this and it wouldn't bleed, but, you know, got to do everything right. So there you go. Cut this suspensory, pushing down on the body wall, and it's released. Uh, Hema steps through to make my window. And then again, another pedicle tie. And yeah, I know I'm doing bad stuff with the blade. I only do that for the dog and cat spays, and it's always way, way away from the incision. I pull um, uh, caudally on the uterine horns, and it usually breaks down the broad ligament in cats every single time. Then at this point, I just ligate the whole damn thing with a Miller's instrument tie. This may actually be what's called a constrictor knot. I'm still kind of unclear on the actual terminology of knots, and I think people are still making this up. Um, but basically, you make a loop and kind of wrap one strand around and pull through. There's a lot of um, demonstrations on YouTube and in various articles on how to do this. Um, not that big of a deal. And then you see me kind of fumble around with this for a bit, but then just placing fourth square throws on top of that, call it a day. Um, this is what I generally do on small dogs and cats. If it's anything bigger, um, I'll probably do some transfixes or something like that if the, the arteries are, are kind of big. Then checking for bleeding, which there is none. See you, bye. I close the body wall with an inverted cruciate. Uh, it's just something I learned in my residency. You can also just use a regular cruciate or you know wh whatever the hell you want. No big deal there. But I actually really like inverted cruciates, especially if I'm going to use them on skin. I think they're easier to take out and they look nicer. And I think they oppose the, the margins a bit better, too, than the, the standard cruciate because the cross is actually underneath your, your plane. Then again, same thing, four throws. I think you'll see me fumble with this again. Kind of near the end. And then for skin sub closure, I totally cheat and probably will piss off a lot of people, but I do a double layer closure in cats. Basically, I take the sub-Q and the skin, I really get that skin margin. Sometimes I even take a little bit of the skin to kind of invert it a little bit. In this case, I do a an inverted, a buried inverted cruciate, which is kind of weird, but I find it works really well most of the time. The most important thing is when you do that final throw through the last bit of skin is that your needle comes up through and under the, the little loop you made right there. And usually this inverts uh, things and, and opposes the skin pretty well. And if it doesn't with this... Yeah, there you see me fucking with it. And I miss it again. And there we go. I know, struggling. Struggling hard. Yep. Pull it, cut it, and then just like your regular buried knot, uh, you can kind of flip it underneath. I actually try not to do this because it was kind of in my residency frowned upon to do this and just bury it properly, but I find this works pretty well. You see, it's we're done. And, and, and that's it.